In our paper, we're working on examining the conditions under which children don't like school, in the sense that they just don't want to be there, independently of costs or, or income constraints. And our argument is that there are two mechanisms whereby school becomes a both hostile and sterile place, particularly for disadvantaged children. One is when the curriculum, the pace at which the curriculum moves ahead, far exceeds the actual student mastery, which means by two or three grades into schooling, children are lost, they don't understand what's actually being, they haven't acquired the fundamentals that they would need to understand what's going on next, and they quickly lose interest, and what I call their learning profile, the pace at which they're acquiring new skills, flattens out, and in which case, schooling is just a boring and tedious experience because you're not actually acquiring any new skills, and you actually perhaps reflect negatively on you, and so my our argument is we're trying to investigate the extent to which the dropout behavior we see of children isn't dropping out for favorable opportunities outside of school, but are dropping out because the actual benefit to them of school gets very low. This has a lot of policy implications because this is very easy to fix. If your curriculum is just going, it's easy to fix in two ways. One, if your curriculum is just going too fast, even for the average student, which we're finding a lot of evidence, particularly in South Asian countries, that that's true. Just slowing the whole curriculum down to assure deeper conceptual mastery of fewer concepts could actually improve schooling for everyone and particularly keep the disadvantage on pace. Second, there's possibilities for remedial or, or helping students catch up. We find lots of programs increasingly in South Asia just by actually teaching to the student's actual level with a focus on raising their competencies can produce enormous effects in very short time, in part because in the existing schools just no one had actually paid any attention to what the child actually knew and tried to get them to the next level of competency up, which improves the schooling experience for schools and, by the way, improves the schooling experience for the actual teachers because they feel energy, energized themselves by the fact that they see the students progressing. The second mechanism of the, that we find that creates this hostile and sterile environment is that there are just schools in which, and we can show with actual children learning from year to year, schools in which the average learning is less than zero. <laughs> we call these dead schools. Essentially what happens is when accountability mechanism breaks down, just nothing useful is happening in the school, then obviously, again, school is a sterile experience and it explains high levels of dropout. I think it, it'll help us explain high le low levels of student attendance because just nothing's going on, even conceivably of interest to students, and it becomes just kind of a warehousing exercise. And to the extent that students who are disadvantaged, either because they're in remote locations, they're socially disadvantaged, to the extent that those students are trapped in these dead schools, it can produce the self-reinforcing inequality where you start out behind, you're in a bad school, you fall further behind, the curriculum moves ahead. By four or five years of schooling, you've neither mastered sufficient competencies to learn on your own, nor is there any possibility to catch up with the curriculum. And there's basically two things you can do. <laughs> One is uh, through a variety of ways you can allow children, well, there's three things you can do. One is you can provide parents and students with information as to which are the dead schools so that you can mobilize some kind of effort to fix them either from the bottom up uh, or the other possibility is by identifying the dead schools intervene from the top down where the school system recognizes that there's just low learning levels from year to year in a particular school there can be an intervention to say look there's something wrong with the school we're going to fix it and the third is to allow students to opt out of the school so a fair number of programs say for vouchers or scholarships that allow children to choose a school what you find is that children very rapidly opt out and it's not as if these children and parents don't know these are dead schools it's just they have very few alternatives so basically it's fix it from the bottom up fix it from the top down or allow them to opt out um, and to some extent some mix of all three will happen. <laughs>